24 years ago, I first heard the name Robin Hobb and heard that this was something that I should be paying attention to. So why did it take me so long to finally read The First Lady of Epic Fantasy? Well, let's talk about it, but let's begin by taking a closer look at the realm of the Elderlings. When considering a man's motives, remember that you must not measure his wheat with your bushel for he may not be using the same standard at all. When you spring an idea and decide it is truth without evidence, you blind yourself to other possibilities, and very little worth knowing is taught by fear. I grew up fatherless and motherless in a court where all recognized me as a catalyst, and a catalyst I became. Nothing takes the heart out of a man more than the expectation of failure. And no man is so dangerous as the man who cannot decide what he fears. Stop thinking of what you intend to do. Stop thinking of what you have just done. Then stop thinking that you have stopped thinking of those things. Then you will find the now. The time that stretches eternal is really the only time that there is. You must stop longing. It poisons today's ease reaching always for tomorrow. Do not do what you cannot undo until you consider what you can't do once you've done it. A burden shared can not only lighten it, it can form a bond between those who share it so that no one is left to bear it alone. Death is always less painful and easier than life, and yet we do not day to day choose death, because ultimately, death is not the opposite of life, but the opposite of choice. Death is what you get when there are no choices left to make. However, when all roads lead to death, there is no point in running down any of them. Hey, what's up, bookworms? And a name I don't know what I'm going to call you guys yet because I know absolutely nothing about this world. Mike here to talk a little Robin Hobbs. Uh, well, I guess Realm of the Eldlings overall, specifically uh, the Farseer trilogy because that's what I'm going to be reading here starting this week. But uh, really, this is a uh, why I decided to read, not a why you should read. So if you're looking for a lot of information about the series, uh, I don't want to spoil myself, so I haven't looked that up. My uh, why I decided to read really, or why I just kind of give a story that kind of led me to get to this point where I've decided to commit to reading an author or a series. So uh, lots of different stories to go along with that uh, with that theme on this channel. I've done that numerous times with other series, and I thought it was something that would be fun to, uh, to as I dive into my second epic fantasy world this year behind Malazan, and that is, of course, The Realm of the Eldlings by Ms. Hobb. I, I, like I said, I first heard about her uh, in high school, but let's talk about the series a little bit first. 16 book series started in 1995 with Assassin's Apprentice, and I did not hear of it until 1997, but it consists of four trilogies and one quartet. There's the Farseer Trilogy, the Live Ship Traders Trilogy, the Tawny Man Trilogy, Rainwild Chronicles Quartet, and then ends with the Fitz and the Fool Trilogy. I do also know there are some short stories and novellas out there, but um, uh, yeah, I think there's seven of them, something like that. So there's a lot. As far as I know, though, the series is complete as of 2017. Now, like I said, I was a senior in high school in 1997. Go ahead and make your jokes now. But uh, a friend of mine was real excited talking about something called Assassin's Quest. And I'm like, what are you even talking about right now? And he's like, the new Robin Hobb book. I'm like, who the hell is Robin Hobb? And he's like, you know, uh, here's the thing. I wasn't nearly as plugged in with fantasy then. I was still really, besides Lord of the Rings, I was still mainly just Stephen King, Michael Crichton, Anne Rice 
1997. That was really what I was into. I wasn't crazy back into the fantasy. That wasn't that door wasn't open again until I got into the Dark Tower a few years later. But uh, he kind of gave me a sales pitch for the series, and I mean, look, I'm all aboard for uh, for uh, animal companions in a series, and that was kind of something that interested me right away. This was pre reading uh, Song of Ice and Fire. I didn't pick that up until the year 2000. So uh, I, I didn't I didn't know that that was a common theme in epic fantasy. Really, uh, again, like I said, guys, besides Tolkien, I wasn't really affluent in very much fantasy during this time period. So he gave me a, a pitch for the what he's at the time was the final book in the Farser trilogy. I thought, okay, well that doesn't sound like too much of a commitment. Sure, that sounds like something I'd like to add to my list right behind The Black Company by Glenn Cook. You know, <laughs> another series that I haven't read, which we'll talk about in a minute. But I need to say, yeah, I was very interested in the series. Uh, but look, there are five fantasy universes I have put off for the longest time. Wheel of Time, which I covered and read in, in 2019 and 2020. Malazan, which I'm doing right now on the channel. It's going to be taking place over uh, this year and next. Uh, Memory, Sorrow, and Thorn by Tad Williams, based on the prodding and recommendation of my older brother for 20 years now. Uh, the Black Company, of course, like I said, that's just because I love Grimdark, and a lot of people say that's where it really, really took hold with uh, with Glenn Cook. So I, I, I always have had it on the radar, and just it just never quite happened. And of course, Realm of the Elderlings. Now, with Realm of the Elderlings, I kept saying, "Oh, well, uh, I'll just wait for it to get complete." And then it just kept growing and kept growing and kept growing. Eventually, where I was like, "That that series ain't never going to end. I'm not going to read that many books." Now that it's over, I feel like okay, I feel like I can finally dive into that man look in 2019 when i started this channel uh I, I didn't know i was starting the channel but it was around the time where i said you know what a lot of these long series that i've been thinking about reading i want to go ahead and start to make it a priority to do those instead of just doing another stephen king reread which i actually was doing right before i started uh, wheel of time but i said i want to do wheel of time and i want to do black company at the time malazan still was that thing where i was like intimidated and i didn't want to do it and the whole reason that moved up was just because of the interest in a read-along and that's what we're doing right now in case you missed it but uh with realm of the elderlings i said you know what i am going to commit to reading the farseer trilogy this year and kind of see where I go from there. Get a feel for the author, see how I feel about her work, and decide if I want to commit to uh, all 16 books in this series, especially when everyone that I talk to can't stop telling me how much they hate Rain Wild. But you know what? <laughs> I'll cross that bridge uh, when it gets there. But uh, yeah, um, I think doing Wheel of Time, getting it done, starting Malazan, getting it done. I said, I wanted another series, but not a long one, which you're like, this book has 16 series. What are you talking about? Or 16 books. What are you talking about? Black Company was 10 books. Okay. And it's just 10 books. I know they have like, they're kind of they're separated the same way, but I just said, you know what? That's a longer series. So I'm just going to kind of push it off until I finish. That's first up when I finish Malazan. Next year, I feel like I can add in uh, Memory, Sorrow, and Thorn along with uh, the, 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 the back half five of, uh, of Malazan, Book of the Fallen. So what I said with this is I want to do the Farser trilogy. And if I really like it, then I'll decide if I'm going to keep going. I have lots of other stuff I want to read this year. So I'm afraid right now all I have room in my schedule is just that. But uh, something that I was kind of apprehensive about is I said I didn't want to start big, heavy series while I was doing Malazan. So uh, I already think maybe uh, it was a mistake doing this, but a lot of people have told me that, look, it's not nearly as heavy or dense as something like Malazan, so it's not gonna like completely throw you off. It's not like the people on my Discord server that are doing Malazan and Will of Time at the same time, and I don't know how you have the room in your head for all of those names. But uh, like I said, uh, I'm excited to finally start ticking some of those off my list. And of course, this has been one that I've had an interest in for a very, very long time. I, I think the reason that I've just committed just to Farseer is like I said, just because it's such a long, long series, I don't want to tell you guys, hey, I'm going to be covering this entire series and then I read Farseer and maybe don't like it and then I'm stuck. Okay, I don't, I don't like to lie to people like that. Personally, I think I'm going to like it, so I'm not really worried about that. But uh, before we go on, let's kind of talk about what the series is about here. In a faraway land where members of the royal family are named for the virtues they embody, one young boy will become a walking enigma. Born on the wrong side of the sheets, Fitz, son of chivalry Farseer, 
It is a royal bastard cast out into the world, friendless and lonely. Only his magical link with animals, the old art known as the wit, gives him solace and companionship. But the wit, if used too often, is a perilous magic and one abhorred by nobility. So when Fitz is finally adopted into the royal household, he must give up his old ways and embrace a new life of weaponry, scribing, and courtly manners, and how to kill a man secretly as he trains to become a royal assassin. And I always say Fitz is a name I've heard quite a lot because I think that it's in the title of a lot of these books later on. I think Fitz, Fool, and Assassin are, are those three words are in the numerous titles within this series. But uh, yeah, uh, again, I know that's very vague. Obviously, I wanted like a non spoiler thing. That's just uh, the blurb on the back of the cover for when you buy the trilogy as a whole, which I had on paperback before I decided to get these lovely illustrated editions that they put out in the States. I don't know if these are worldwide or not, but I know this is the first time. Uh, that Farseer was available in hardcover in the States. So that was another reason why I decided to read this because uh, beginning to read it from those beautiful illustrated editions is obviously uh, something there. But look, this has been on my to-do list for 24 years. You know, uh, anytime you kick something down the road that long, you start to think, okay, it's just never going to happen. But with Wheel of Time, which I kicked for about 20-something years, uh, and now Black Company, but starting Malazan finally, and that, that had been uh, almost you know 15 years that I'd been kind of kicking the can down the road on that one, uh, I think it made me say, okay, let's just keep doing this. It feels good to finally cross these off your reading bucket list, right? But uh, I, I think constant watchers of this channel that know by now what I like, what I say I'm looking for in fantasy, they couldn't stop recommending it to me. They know how much I love character work. To me, you can have the coolest world. You can have the greatest writing style ever. If I don't like your characters, I don't like your story. I could care less if I'm not invested in your characters. To me, character matters first. So if I love your characters, I'm eventually going to like your world and I'll probably be okay with your writing style. If you're a published author uh, that many people recommend, uh, I, I know that you can write probably. So that really is the least of my worries. I don't need a tr crazy wordsmith. I don't prioritize a hard magic system or anything like that. If you've got characters that I love, I will be into your world. And the thing about Miss Hobb is that Basically, I've been told that her character work is just legendary. That you will love her characters like they are your best friend. And when bad things happen to them, it's going to devastate you. And that is what I'm here for. I cannot state enough how important that is to me. So if, if she's writing characters that are so well-loved that there's people in tears when they just talk about some of these characters. It must be something special. Uh, to me, uh, if you have the characters that I absolutely love, again, your story can just be okay, and I'm probably going to be along for the ride. Another reason is, look, let's be honest, Robin Hobb is a living legend in the world of epic fantasy. You know, she is referred to as the first lady of epic fantasy for a reason. You know, I would have thought that if I, someone had told me that title before I researched this, I would have thought they were talking about Ursula Le Guin, but um, that apparently is like her, uh, her, her nickname, I guess you would say. But uh, it, it, I don't think that I've met anyone that's well-versed in epic fantasy that doesn't have incredibly pleasant things to say about Robin Hobb. Even the people who say uh, the story just really wasn't for me, they can't stop crediting her ability as an author and as, as, a, as someone who was really good with her character. So uh, again, like I said, even when your criticism is stuff like, oh, but she's really amazing and the story just wasn't for me, uh, that, that that's that's kind of the highest uh, regard that I think that an author can be held in amongst uh, fellow readers. But uh, I, I know all the warnings already about Farseer. I, a lot of people told me it's uh, it's not the best part of the series. It's probably the least favorite trilogy uh, besides Rain Wild, which is a which is a quartet. So I guess it doesn't count. Uh, I've heard a lot about Rain Wild not being good. But anyway, uh, basically everyone just says, "Look, Farseer is okay, but Live Ship Traders is amazing. You've got to get that far." Uh, so look. To me, a slow burn doesn't matter. I am fine with a slow burn. Like I just finished reading Revival by Stephen King, which a lot of people sold to me as like his best horror book since the 80s. And you know what? It's at the 90% mark of that book before the horror even starts. You know, before that, it's all slow burn character study, coming of age story, 
Oh my God, yes, I love stuff like that. I don't even care. I don't need crazy action all the time. I don't need incredible worlds and magic systems, like I said. I am fine. If you're telling me that she's throwing out a coming of age character study in a fantasy setting, I am all aboard. Being a Stephen King constant reader, that's the man's forte, the coming of age story. Throw that into a fantasy setting, I'm on board for sure. So it's a, I'm an easy sell on, on stuff like this. Coming of age story is my absolute favorite trope in any kind of story. I love it. I can't get enough of it. And knowing that, because uh, I, I did start the, the first chapter of this, knowing that the main character of this story starts at like six years old, I'm like, yes, I love this. I love where this is going already. So right from chapter one, it has gripped me. And look, I'm really not that far. I mean, uh, literally a chapter in. So I, I wanted to go in to make this video before I really got too far into it. I don't want that to influence anything. But uh, yeah, this just seems to fit that mold of the coming of age character study and I am here for it. I can't say that. Just like with Malazan though, this just it feels like time. It feels like it was time for me to do this series. You know, so why do you keep putting it off? Especially now that it's complete. You know, so there's that too. But uh, yeah, I, I just can't say how much that the series gets recommended on the channel to me since I started doing it. You have to read Robin Hall. And I said when I got to, uh, to where I made a video where I talked about like um, female authors that I really want to read, she was the top of the list for a reason. Uh, again, not just because of recommendation, but because I have wanted to do this for so long, because she's so highly regarded amongst her peers, that stuff can't be un understated for me, how important that can be for me. So uh, I'm excited about it. Uh, she's she's actually uh, engaged with me on social media before. I'm excited that the first time I get to read this series, I get to read it in these beautiful illustrated editions. Uh, but you look right now, if you want to read with me, it's not an official read along. I am doing Malazan read along. That is the only one official. And that is, that's a bear on its own. Okay. That's too much. But if I tell people when I'm going to be reading these in case they want to to read along with me. And there are plenty of people on the Discord that are reading along with me. So uh, uh, January 2021 is Assassin's Apprentice. March is Royal Assassin. And May is Assassin's Quest. You know, and then I'm going to do some other trilogies. I want to read RF Kwong and things like that that I want to do. And then I'll kind of see where I stand with the uh, second trilogy in this series. But uh, if I really enjoy it, uh, even knowing all of these shortcomings, apparently with this particular trilogy, uh, I'll carry forward. You know, I'm, I'm super excited. I can't, I think that everybody thinks because I was so amped up for Malazan that I just don't have the same energy for a second big series. But I absolutely do. Because like I said, these are two that have been on my reading bucket list for a long, long time. And it feels like a long time coming. And it's just one of those things I'm just super excited about. And I cannot wait to start. So guys, have you read Robin Hobb? What do you think? Drop in the comments and please, no spoilers, obviously, since I'm just starting the series. Tell me your favorite trilogy, things like that. I can't wait to talk to you guys there. So hit me in the comments. I'll talk to you then.